Hello, in this lecture we're going to talk about the break-even point. At the end of this we will be able to explain what the break-even point is and how it can be used. Calculate the break-even point in units. Calculate the break-even point in sales dollars. Okay, so we're going to have two formulas here. One's going to be the break-even point in units and that's going to be fixed cost over the contribution margin per unit. And then we've got the break-even point in sales dollars, which is going to be the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. We can also have an alternative way to take a look at that one, which we'll take a look at as we go as well. Just remember, if you're looking at any problem, you're going to have to consider which of these are being asked. We're talking about the break-even point in units. And when we think about that, it's very important for a business to think about, well, yeah, how many units do we have to sell in order to break even? And then we can easily jump from there to think about, okay, well, how many units do we have to sell not only to break even, but to get an expected revenue percent. So this is a really important calculation, no matter what type of business we're, we're running. Even if it's like a hot dog stand to a very large corporation, we still want to think about in terms of how many units do we need to sell really in order to achieve a certain goal. That goal being first breaking even and then breaking even plus some type of profit margin. And then, of course, we can think about it in terms of sales dollars. Well, how many, how much sales dollars do we need to make? And we can think about, well, how many units do we need to sell in order to hit the sales dollars in order to hit that same break-even point and then take it a step further in terms of break-even plus what uh, profit we want it to get uh, walk away with. So let's break these calculations down. We have the break-even point, uh, break point in units first. That's the first one we'll take a look at. That's going to be the fixed cost. Remember, that's going to be like the rent for things that don't change divided by the contribution margin per unit. And of course, the first thing we need to know is, well, what is the contribution margin per unit? We need to find that calculation. In order to do that, we will take a look at the data over here where we have the sales price, the fixed cost, the uh, maximum capacity, variable costs per unit over here. We're going to use that information to uh, calculate the break-even point in units. And in doing that, first, we need to calculate the contribution margin per unit. All right, contribution margin per unit. We're going to take the sales price per unit. So whatever we're selling, we're saying that we're going to have a sales price of 310 per unit of every every unit that we sell. We're thinking about like inventory. We're selling each piece of inventory where we're getting $310. And then we're going to subtract from that the variable cost per unit. These are the usually the things that are the direct inputs, including the direct labor and uh, the direct materials. These are usually the things that are directly within whatever it is that we are producing. And then we can think of, okay, so we're walking away with 124 of each unit. And then, again, this is going to be common for anything, even if we're selling things, even if we have just a hot dog stand, right? We can really think about, well, how much are we selling these for and what's the cost to make these per unit? And we can think about, okay, that's how much we're walking away with after variable costs. And then we usually have to think about, well, then how many do we have to sell in order to pay for the fixed costs? Fixed costs including things like the rent, the rent of the hot dog stand possibly in that case. So we're, same calculation for large, uh, a large business too. We can try to break it down in a similar fashion and think about, okay, what are we walking away with per unit sales after the variable costs? And then think about how many units we have to sell to get uh, to the, to the uh, cover, the fixed cost, and then tack on the profit. That's going to be the contribution margin per unit. So in this case, we're walking away with 124 after each unit that we sell in this case. Okay, and then if we have the contribution margin percent, also known as the contribution margin ratio, what we're taking is the 124 divided by the sales price. So 124 divided by the sales price gives us 0.4 or 40%. All right, so we're going to use these numbers to put it into our break-even point uh, in units formula, which is the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. So the fixed costs over here, in this case, are the uh, 421,600. And remember, those, things, those are the things that don't change. Those are things like the rent. It is what it is. So we're going to take that and we're going to divide by the contribution margin per unit. And so that's how much we're walking away with after each unit sales, after the variable costs. Not including the fixed costs, but after the variable costs. And if we divide that out, the 421,600 divided by the 124, that means that we need to sell, in this case, 3,400 units in order to break even. So that's how many units we need to sell in order to just cover the fixed cost, basically the things like the rent. Next, we're going to calculate the break-even point in sales dollars. So we talked about how many units we need to sell, and now we need to think about how many dollars we need to bring in in terms of revenue in order to cover both the variable cost and the fixed cost. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, well, uh, if we had the 3400 
units that we need to sell we just need to know well how much do we sell in those for in this case it's the 310 dollars therefore uh, we just multiply those two out and that would be the revenue that we're going to pull in and that's one way we could do it that's one way we can think about it we're going to do that on the next slide but the standard formula and the way that it is often going to be uh, useful to look at it in certain situations depending on the situation we're in would be to use the formula of the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio so the break-even point in terms of sales dollars is going to be the formula of the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio what's the contribution margin ratio again remember we calculated that prior we said i called it the contribution margin percent over here that was the uh, sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit gives us the contribution margin here per unit in this case the contribution margin divided per unit divided by the sales price per unit gives us that uh, 40.4 or 40 percent that's the contribution margin percent or the contribution margin ratio now if we had the totals here if we had not per unit but if we had the total sales minus the total variable cost giving us the contribution margin we would have the same ratio because of the behavior of the uh con of the variable cost related to the sales so keep that in mind that we could be using the per unit numbers we could be using the total numbers but if we divide the contribution margin or the contribution per unit divided by the sales price or the total revenue we should come up to the same ratio in this case being the 40 percent okay so if we plug that in here then we're going to take the fixed cost given to us here things like the rent 421.6 divided by the contribution margin ratio which in this case is the 40 percent and if we take this divided by uh, the 40 percent or 0 0.4 we have the 1 million uh, 54 thousand so that's going to be the break-even point in terms of dollars so here's the break-even point in terms of units here's the break-even point in terms of dollars what's the other way we can we can think about that in order to calculate this well if we take the break-even point in terms of units the 3400 units and we multiply that times the sales price the 310 as we discussed before we get to that same number that 1 million 54 thousand so whichever way makes sense to you you can use whichever method makes sense but when you look at multiple choice problems of course it's very likely that the problem will be limited in such a way that we will only be able to use one or the other types of calculations this is the calculation that will often be be used so if you have a multiple choice question and they only give you uh, enough information to give you the contribution margin ratio and they don't give you enough information to figure out maybe uh, this number here the sales price per unit then you're not going to be able to do it <laughs> unless you have uh, this formula uh, in your head and, and ready to go for that type of uh, problem so keep that in mind as we go